Okay, so let's take a look at what you're going to need in order to make a mechanical arm rod puppet hand. So what I mean by mechanical is it will have a trigger built into the arm rod or at the bottom of the arm rod that when pulled the puppet hand will close and open. In this specific case I'm making one that's going to be able to point. Uh, but the principles are the same. So, the first thing you're going to require is a piece of foam. Now, this is like a piece of cosplay foam that I'm using, and uh, it's this one here. Uh, I get it like this, so it's nice and uh, it's got a bit of width to it. Uh, I get this from uh, a builder's warehouse or something like that. Um, uh, they all seem to have it. I'm not exactly sure what they use it for, but it's perfect for this. Um, again, cosplay foam, official cosplay foam will also do the job. You need a big enough piece so that you can get both of the hands that you require onto it at the size that you require. The hands I'm using are four fingers or three fingers and a thumb um, and the principles still are the same for a five finger hand or whatever that you choose. So, with that out of the way, you're also going to need uh, a little piece of flexible plastic. Now this piece has just come off an ice cream tub. I just cut a bit off an ice cream tub. You might need a bit more than that, um, but you're going to need a piece of that. It's going to help us with the joints a little later. You'll also need some elastic. Okay, this elastic seems to be great. Um, you could use the string elastic if you prefer, so you'll need some elastic. We're also going to need some of these. These are little um, electrical uh, wire connectors with the little screws in here. And what I've done is I've taken the black casing off. Sometimes they come clear. I've taken the black casing off so it leaves us with this little brass piece with the two uh, um, screws there uh, ready for us to use. Now for one hand that's got three fingers and a thumb, you will need four of these. So for our hands, we're going to need eight in total. You'll need a little screwdriver with a flat head in this case, which is for these little connectors. And um, you're also going to need a knife. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. You'll need a knife of some kind. You'll need a pair of scissors and uh, a pen, of course, to uh, draw out your hands and to mark off the little joints, which we'll get to shortly. Um, also here, you'll notice I have um, a piece of tube. Um, it's like a straw. It's just a little bit stronger than a straw. In fact, what I use are these. These are the sticks that hold your balloons, you know, um, at the fairs and things like that. So they're great. But you can just use normal straws as well. No problem at all. It's just these, like I say, a little bit stronger. It's got to be something that you can cut with a knife or a pair of scissors to get little tubes like this one. Um, and then um, we're going to need some fishing wire, some tackle wire. This is a 17 kilogram, so uh, not too thick, but nice and strong. And uh, you'll also need your arm rod. Now, uh, my arm rod, I make retractable arm rods, okay? A little bit thicker than I'd like this one, um, but it'll do the job for now. And uh, basically... Um, you can use your normal arm rod, it's just you'd have the wire then, the fish wire coming down the side of it, down to a little hoop. Whereas this is hollow, so my wire will go inside and it'll go onto a 3D printed handle with a trigger to activate the hand. Okay, and then finally, you're going to need a glue gun for certain things, not, not everything, but for certain things, the glue gun will come in handy. Um, you might want to use contact, contact adhesive if you want the more uh, oppres uh, professional approach here. A little bit messy, but great, great glue. And then for things like uh, this, if you don't want to use the contact adhesive, you may want a needle and a thread. But with that said, um, that's everything to my mind at the moment that you're going to need in order to build this. So, if you've got all those bits, the first step will be to draw out your hands and then to go ahead and cut them out like so. Now you'll notice there's this little bit here that I've cut into. In my case, this is for my arm rod, which will go in there with the glue and then it'll have um, a piece of uh, material or so glued over the top to really keep it in nice and snug. Okay, but don't worry about that part just for now. Cut out the shape of the hand. Once you've done that, just take your pen and go and mark off 
the joints of where the, the fingers would bend, just like they are on your hand. Bearing in mind this is the left hand, okay? So we're going to mark off all the joints. Once you've done that, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So now that you've cut the hand out, and um, as you can see here, I've moved on a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do this now. This is to help create them finger joints and to help them flip back along with the elastic, which will come later. So what I've done is very simple. I've taken some of the, uh, the plastic. OK, I've made sure the glue gun's on. I've taken some of the plastic that we got from our ice cream tub. And I'm just cutting little strips at about, uh, I don't know, just over two centimetres long and about a centimetre wide. So maybe three centimetres long and a centimetre wide. OK, now, first step, we're going to cut off the joint for, in this case, the little finger here. And uh, I'm going to take my knife and very carefully, I'm just going to begin to make a slit in the finger. And do be careful here, it just does take a moment or two. And you want to go about a centimetre deep, something like that. So let's turn him around and come in this side as well. we are. It's looking good. Okay, now let's take a look first. Pop a little bit of plastic in, make sure it fits nicely and that it's level. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue from the glue gun and just put some inside that little pocket that we've made and drop in the plastic. Just give it a little pinch. There we go. Perfect. So now the next step, we're going to cut the next joint off here, just like so. And um, Make sure I've got him the right way around that way. And then I'm going to make the same slit, but this slit is going to go all the way through to the other side. Okay, so let's just make our way through nice and carefully again. You don't want to catch your fingers in this. See, I'm coming through the other side just nicely and carefully. Just allowing it to work its way across. It's good. I'll come in from the other side as well. There we go. And like I said, you're going to make your way all the way through. Just be careful of your fingers. Maybe you've got a different way of doing this, which is also fine. There we are. Can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but you'll get there. Just take your time. There we go. That's it. Doesn't need to be super neat. None of this will be will be seen. And then, just like before, uh, in fact, before you put a bit of glue in, go ahead and cut yourself another strip. The same size all of these strips are more or less the same size now go ahead and uh, put some of your glue in here take your first finger that you did and uh, pop that in like so and then take your other one and just pop that in but don't let it come past here okay so you get it in as far as it will go but not letting it come past that part of the join there. Then again, give it a little squeeze like before. Make sure everything's good there. Excellent, looking good. And then finally, you're going to do the same now here. 
and about a centimeter in and that's going to join the last finger just like we did all the other ones that you can see and you'll see it's a little time consuming but a pretty simple process overall there we go before you glue just uh, make sure that you uh, see if it's far enough which it isn't so I need to go a little bit further Try that. Yeah, that looks about right. So now we'll just go ahead and do the same. We'll glue that one into position nice and easy with the glue gum. And for this purpose, the glue gum will be fine. Make sure he's in nicely. That's it. Then again, just give him a bit of a press and stick it into place. Then you've got all of your fingers that are already on an automatic flip back. And when we add on the back here some of these uh, strips, then it's just going to make it even more durable and uh, more springy, more alive. So, there we go. It's now ready to move on to our next step. Okay, now the next step before joining the elastic to the back of the hand is to just make a groove in the other parts of the hand like I've already done here. And that's to help it bend over a little bit there too. Now let me show you how I did that. I took a little file, just like so. This is a kind of a diamond shaped file, so it's got a rougher edge here. And all I did was just go round making that little groove. Not all the way through, just enough so that it's a bit more flexible. So let me show you with this part here, nice and easy. I'm just coming in and just following it round bit by bit back and forward a little bit of pressure until you've got the kind of dint in there that you're looking for just to help with the bending and the ease of those fingers curling in just like so okay just gives it that little bit more flexibility in that bottom joint. I think I could do with a little bit more here. There we go. Good. Right. So the next step is to add some of the elastic. This again is going to help us for the fingers to spring back into place. Now uh, I'm going to do this by simply um, giving the elastic a little bit of a stitch up at the top and a little bit of a stitch at through the bottom here somewhere about there and that's going to allow when the finger bends to just pull it back nice and straight and nice and easily. Done these now three so far we've just uh, uh, at the top here and at the bottom here we've done a stitch Okay, and uh, what that allows for is when the finger bends over is that it flicks back into position with the help from the plastic joints and the uh, elastic. So let's show you with the, uh, the little thumb. I take a piece here like so and fold him over just to make him a little bit stronger. So uh, yeah, I think... That should do it, somewhere about there. There we go. And then all we're going to do, if I've got enough cotton left here, I'm just going to stitch this top bit up. Now, of course, you can do this however you like, but it doesn't need to be neat because nobody's ever going to see it. So... Uh, 
And we'll just do a couple of stitches through there. That's great. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch him to the top of the thumb here, like so. And just come over. Like I say, it doesn't need to be your neatest work in the world. It just needs to hold nicely that it's not going to come loose. That's it. And we'll just give him a knot off. There, like so. Let's just do that again. There we go. And then uh, chop that away. And then you're going to do the same down here. Just make sure you've got it nicely lined. So it pulls just a little bit. And then go ahead and let's just stitch it into here. Hopefully I've just got enough thread to do so. We'll see just now. Nice and simple. That's it. Now don't pull too tight. Remember you are dealing with foam here. Like that and knot it off. I think I'll just do one more just to be safe. There we go. Yeah, just enough. Excellent. Drop the remaining off. And there we have our four fingers all ready to spring back into place. So, there we go. Once you've done that, we'll be ready to go on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to start to add our little um, wire connectors here. And uh, to do this, we're going to be using the glue gun again. And um, we're going to make a little slit in the top of the finger, pop it in, making sure we've still got space to get to the holes with the wire. And then we're going to glue it in. So uh, let's have a look at the way to do that. We're going to take our knife again, not too deep. And right at the top of the finger, now be careful not to cut through any of your thread where you've sewn the, the stuff on at the back there. You're just making a little gap big enough to put a bit of glue in and to sit that in there. And I'll do this first one with you, just so you can get the idea. of what's going on. Just clearing a little gap there. And again, you can do this in any way that works for you. At the moment, I'm just using this knife just to clear out enough of a gap there. Push it in with your finger and that's just going to help us sit that in there nicely. Now you might want to get yourself a pair of pliers for this next bit so you don't burn your fingers. And we're going to put a bit of glue inside here like so. That's it. We're going to take our little wire joiner there. We're just going to pop it in making sure we can still get to the holes, very important. And that's looking all right. And then just let that set into place like so. And again, doesn't need to be too neat. And then you're going to do the same here and here and over here as well. So basically you'll have all four of them in place. Screws facing upwards, just like so, okay, so, um, all right, I'll let you do that and then we'll come back to the next step. Okay, so now you can see I've started to add the tubes. Now, remember, we had the straw or the plastic tube and uh, 
I just simply cut in small sections like so and putting them into place. Now it's very easy so far, we've just glued them into place and I'm going to show you here with this one now. I'm just putting a piece of hot glue, not too much, do it to the size you know of your piece of straw for that area and then I'm just going to press it down and just let that set. Something just like that. Okay, now uh, just take note of where they all are, all right? And um, for me, I'm going to have my arm rod going into here. Uh, and then, of course, when we wire it up, everything will come down the arm rod. Now, for you, if you're using your own arm rod, you can attach the arm rod however you like, maybe on the other side of the hand. Um, and then you would then continue to place another piece of straw right uh, here. I seem to have lost my straw. There it is. Um, you'll place another piece of straw in here like so. Chop it off at about there and then your string will come out of there um, and down through your arm rod. Okay, so I'm going to leave that bit blank for now because like I said that's when this piece will be going in and uh, I'll do that a little bit later. So there we go, that's your next step. So uh, make sure now that you've got some uh, um, fishing wire, okay, because we're going to be looking at installing the fishing wire on to our hand mechanism in just a moment. Okay, so now I've begun to wire the fingers up, as you can see. Now, uh, before I do this last finger with you, I just want to point out, I've added another two tubes here. Um, I didn't like the way it would pull the fingers in, all coming through the middle one. So I just added another one here for this one, another one here for this one, all leading to this same place. Uh, remember, if you're not using an arm rod like mine, you will have the final one going in there to there like that, ready for this to come out of the side where your arm rod is kind of going to be. So um, let's just take a look. Um, now the length of the cable, I've done it quite long, okay, there's quite a lot. You want it at least the length of all of this and the length of your arm rod and then a little bit more so you've got room to tie it up to your switch. So just keep that in mind. But uh, we've got to put support on the other side yet, so I'll hold it with my fingers for now. But uh, straight away, you can see how, how it's starting to, uh, to work, okay? So let's take a look now at uh, placing the last wire in, the last uh, piece of uh, fishing cable. So uh, I'm not going to cut it right away. Uh, what you'll need is your little screwdriver, and just go ahead and undo these screws as far as you can without them falling out. Okay, then take your fishing wire and place it through, pull it through, and then go ahead and send it back through again. That's it. And give it a little pull so it's nice and taut in there. And then just go ahead and tighten those little screws back up. And tighten them nicely, but don't overdo it, otherwise you'll, you'll break through the... Uh, the, the brass or uh, the copper or whatever they're made of. That should do nicely. Okay, cut off this little extra bit here that we don't need. And then, like I said, make sure you get a good, maybe a metre or two, uh, uh, or a metre and a half or something like that, just so you can really be safe that you've give yourself enough to fit you know, to the trigger and down the arm rod later on. And then we're just going to thread it through the straw holes. Just like so. So that basically all of them end up coming and meeting together. Let's pull that through. There we go. So now we've got all of our strings. So you could have a trigger that operates, uh, you know, each uh, each 
finger individually if you wanted to take it that far but for 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 what I need right now that isn't necessary now you see this little one here just popped off so I didn't glue that well enough but we are going to glue over them once we are done um, to make sure that they really are secure um, that's why we're not touching the wires yet because we'll pull them back through when we come to do that okay so there we go now of course if uh, when we bring all these together and they come down the main uh, pipe or down the arm rod um, all together onto a ring at the bottom or a switch then they'll be able to all pull at the same time okay which is going to allow for the hand to open and close just like we suggested so make sure you get that done and then we'll look at moving on to the next step okay so the next step all I'm doing to reinforce these little tubes and I've done many of them here so I'm just gluing a strip over them like so now be careful not to block the uh, the entrance to the tube where your wire needs to go through now by doing this you're just really securing them down better so that when we're pulling on them they really are secured on because you don't want them to pop off once you've put your skin over the top of the uh, hand you see so just make sure you've got plenty on there just wrapping them over just like a little bridge going over the top of them nice and simple oh I'll try not to touch it while it's hot because that hurts just like so there we go okay you can also do the same with these if you wish um, I tend to just do the, the top and the bottom of them or the side the two sides of them just like so because then you can if need be you can take the skin off and you can go ahead and change the cable or the wire if for whatever reason that might need to be the case so I'll just do these quickly this one here Good. And this last one here, be careful not to burn through any of your wire when you do this. There we are. Okay, looking good. So then uh, once that's dry, you're going to thread your um, wire back through all the appropriate holes and then we will be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we need to make sure the hand is uh, rigid enough or in the palm that when you pull the trigger, it doesn't bend the whole hand. So the way I've done that, I've took a piece of uh, hardboard and uh, I've cut it out big as the palm I've covered it in um, contact adhesive okay and uh, the same on the back of the hand and I've let that dry and then all I'm going to do is just place it on underneath the joints and give it a good stick down press it around everywhere with your fingers and that will give you the rigidness and keep it still light that you need in order for you then to be able to... Oh look, he's swearing at you. <laughs> Make sure you group the wires correctly and then you'll have enough strength when you're holding the rod to be able to um, operate his hand as you can see so there we go that's your next step if you can't find uh, if you haven't got a bit of uh, hardboard you could always use um, a nice bit of plastic that you could cut out or a good uh, thick layer of cardboard you could try something like that but 
this is the best bet. I just buy a, a sheet of it or so and cut out the little um, back parts as we need. So remember this on the back, same as the elastic, not on this side. Okay, so uh, really um, that's the whole mechanism up and running. Like I say, my next step is to now attach the arm rod and uh, which I'm going to do just now um, and again for you what I would suggest is that if you're having an attached um, arm rod maybe it's a clip-on arm rod uh, then it won't matter if you have an attached arm rod I would have attached it underneath this plate put the plate on top of it had the wires coming out of here down your arm rod and then onto a loop okay but like I said in my case because I'm using these um, these extendable arm rods that I make I'm uh, going to thread it down here I haven't printed the handle yet um, but I will print the handle and that will have the trigger on so uh, I will uh, complete the arm rod and uh, then we'll take a look at how that's looking in just a moment and uh, then it will be time to take a look at how we put on the skin um, over the hand where it uh, doesn't stop it from having its movement the best way to do that is to uh, with a sewing machine and sew your uh, glove put the glove on and then attach the arm so we'll uh, we'll take a look at that a little later on there are other ways if you wish you could glue the bottom part around the edges here of the skin um, but not on the surface here, just on the edges and then you could put the top part and uh, seam and glue the top part on as well um, that would that would also work um, so uh, but anyway um, let's take the next step and we're going to be placing now the arm rod into this little pocket that I created and uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing that the same way as before with the hot glue, but also once I've done that, I'm then going to um, glue a piece of plastic over it like that as well. Um, it doesn't need to be quite that big, so let's let's chop that down a little bit. It's going to uh, go on just like that there okay so i think you're getting the idea so um let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can do that shall we sure my glue gun is warmed up and ready to go yeah so just put plenty of glue in here if you're using the same kind of arm rod method as me now if you're not remember then you would have put another piece of pipe in here right up to the edge of the arm where your string um, or your wire would be able to come through from okay so just keep that in mind and then give it a good press in and hold it in position allow it to glue give it a pinch whatever is necessary just allow that to set looking good and then of course once that's done we can add some more glue down here and over the top just to make sure that it really sets just make sure that you don't cover that hole of course okay and then we'll put some extra glue in here now ready for the plastic strip to go over the top and then for my instance the arm rod will be done and attached sometimes i will, will uh, spray these arm rods black or whatever beforehand sometimes i do it afterwards uh, but either way is fine then pop the plastic over the top Give it a good press and hold it in place, just allowing it to set. Again, making sure none of the glue covers the hole for the wires to go through. That's whether you're doing an arm rod like mine or whether you're doing one um, with a straw and then going down through to your own arm rod. Either way is absolutely fine. Just make sure that is all stuck down nicely. Again, it doesn't need to be uh, really neat 
really tidy because nobody is going to see it. So there we go, that should do nicely. Should give it enough time to properly set. We'll get the hairdryer on it. Um, but there we go. Okay, so I'm going to thread now the cables through the arm rod and uh, then we can take a look and see how it goes. Okay, so uh, with the, the rod fitted, this is uh, my rod here. Uh, let's take a look. Here's all the wires, lots of it at the moment. And uh, if we give them a pull, there we go. Working very nicely. As you can see, I haven't got all the fingers, uh, the wires pulling at the same time, but you can, you can get the idea. And uh, there we go. So that's one um, mechanical puppet hand. And that's how you would make it yourself. Now you've just got to put the skin on and uh, cover him. And like I suggest to you, um, maybe uh, um, do the, the, the glove and sew it and then put it on and then add the uh, the arm afterwards. That's going to be your best bet. It's better than gluing because the glove needs to be free so it has the ability to uh, to operate. So there you go. Hope you enjoy it and uh, let me know how you get on with building your own.